Hello and welcome to Linux Lads, Season 6, Episode 1. Uh, as usual, I'm your host, Shane. I'm Connor. And I'm Mike. That was a bit uh, prima donna of me to say your host, I guess. Um, you guys are hosts too. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> um, so it's good to be back. A uh, little bit of a false start last week. That was my fault. Um, went on a distro hopping odyssey and completely, I, I don't know what I did to my computer, but my uh, my resolution was like Fisher Price size on my computer. I could, like one window was taking up three quarters of the screen and I still couldn't see anything <laughs> properly. Um so yeah, but anyway, I just re I just installed the proprietary drivers, and uh, it was grand. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, so we got over that. Um, took a long ass break over Christmas. Um, did nothing. Um, what about you guys? One thing I did do was I I was working the Christmas week, and I was off the following week, so the week leading up to New Year's, um, and. In the back of my mind, I saw I realized that I had Grand Theft Auto Five on Steam, and I pretty much did nothing but play it for that entire week, and I completed it in less than a week. <laughs> so <laughs> that game is so good and is so addictive. I I've forgotten how good that game is. Mike, you got yourself a new toy, it seems. Yeah, I decided that my uh, super laptop is uh, a bit too big to drag it around everywhere. And by me, by everywhere, I mean on the sofa and into the bedroom and stuff like that. So I got a little 11.6-inch uh, uh, laptop with a touch screen that you can turn around and it turns into a tablet. It's uh, from a Chinese company called Techlast, the F5 model. And it's a decent thing for the price. It was about, I think, definitely under 300 euros. I'm still waiting on the active pen. Uh, there are some people, some projects that like in, to enable the proper uh, hybrid experience. So I'm still, you know, kind of putting it together. Uh, I put um, uh, OpenSUSE out at, on it at first because it was the only a distro that came out of the box with working Wi-Fi on it, which, uh, uh, you know, it has got some Realtek um, chipset for, for Wi-Fi. It's not great. Um, but OpenSUSE worked, but then I uh, went went uh, distro shopping again, uh, and uh, or distro shopping, sorry. And, uh, distro shopping. <laughs> yeah. Landed up on, uh, I landed on uh, Endeavor OS uh, that I tried previously, what bugged me about it. And this is an actually an interesting tip, right? Which I didn't know. I'm sure more erudite listeners of ours will know. But uh, if you have one of these distros that uh, let you encrypt the whole disk and then you restart it and the thing just like drags through the encryption and it takes ages to decrypt the disk... Uh, if you still, if you are willing to compromise a little on the like on the security, then when you are doing the partitioning, just don't encrypt, encrypt the whole thing. Uh, have a separate uh, boot slash EFI and a separate boot, and then separate root partitions. Uh, like I'm using by VTRFS, but it can be anything, right? And uh, encrypt only the root partition. It might complain that this is not the safest of setups, but that, like I'm willing to make that compromise. The root partition and the home on it is still. Uh, encrypted, but uh, when you then restart it, instead of uh, instead of uh, having to decrypt through the first bootloader, you are decrypting after when the boot partition is loaded and everything, and it's much much snappier. That's I think the out of the box experience in Fedora, by the way. So that's uh, yeah, uh, you learn something every day, right? Everyone's got new toys. Yeah. Um... Over the over the holidays uh, slash Christmas slash Hanukkah slash Kwanzaa <laughs> slash I, um, Festivus Festivus for the rest of us <laughs> slash um, hey, I, I, thanks God is over I got it <laughs> oh yeah and today's the day yeah we're recording this on the twentieth of January so the Orange Man is finally out today as well but <laughs> but uh, just just thought I dropped that in um, yeah I picked myself up a touch screen for the Pi the Pi Four. I have like a Pi 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I just thought I, if I want to use the touchscreen, I want this to be like a little mini computer thing, then I'm going to put the best Pi in there. Uh, so it's the 8 gig model as well. Um, and it's a really nifty little case that I got. Uh, I'll, I'll provide the link um, so you guys can have a look at it on uh, on the, the pihut.com. 
and the case is just beautiful like it's really nice it's got two back covers on it you can have like a you can have like a solid one with a little optional cutout for the gpio pins but the one that i put on it is one with holes in it for ventilation but then it's also got like a little tiny fan that uh that's that goes into the gpio fin f- fins pins and uh yeah it doesn't actually make too much noise and what's really nifty is you can depending on what uh headers on the gpio you put it on it can be either high speed or low speed you you so you put it on like the 3.3 volt rail or the 5 volt rail and then the other one on a, on a ground pin there's several ground pins so it's grand you have choice but yeah it's really nice i put it on low speed obviously because i don't really feel the need to cool a pie all that much i know they i know the pie 4 gets hot but i don't think it's going to get that hot i'm not going to be overclocking a pie or anything um but yeah overall i f- took me a bit of fiddling to put it together to cable manage it and get the, like the jumper wires kind of all snuggled in together and the ribbon cables that are really fiddly to put in and, oh, i hate those but yeah they're so bad we need a better solution for that but uh i also treated myself to an arduino arduino what my what the hell is going on today arduino starter kit um that didn't work can't get i can't get the i can't flash the sketches to it because it just can't my computer can't see the arduino i can't communicate with it so i'm gonna have to come back to that i've only tried it once so i'll uh provide updates on that in the next episode um but yeah uh also went on a distro as i mentioned earlier went on a distro hopping odyssey which led to the issues last week so um decided i was going to try ubuntu studio yet again for the third time uh because it's now kde plasma uh, they have a KDE Plasma version, or they moved to it like the, it was XFCE beforehand, but now it's KDE Plasma. I thought, mm, maybe they'll, maybe they, maybe it's okay now. Maybe it's time for me to finally get 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 into KDE again, and <laughs> because I've always loved the idea, but I just can't do it. And yeah, I lasted a week on Ubuntu Studio KDE Plasma version because it's uncanny valley for me. There's just something wrong, but I just don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys know what i'm talking about there i mean i know you guys like kde but there's just i don't know there's something i just can't put my finger on it i think kde doesn't hide away uh problems that's i think that's part of it yeah it, it like there are some options where you're like who the fuck would possibly like want to... i know i appreciate that the option is there i'm like that's really nifty that they they have an option for that and it's very clever but it's just can I have an optional toggle to hide all of these things when I don't need them? That's the second thing, right? So they give you options. And uh, so it was like, uh, there was somewhere today on uh, Linux Unplugged or Action Action News um, earlier, they were saying KD had two choices to make, either smart, uh, smoother, uh, smoother um, animations or more stable en- rendering, right? And they decided, okay, we just let the user choose, which is... Like the, that's why the you know the the settings seems to mul- seems seem to mul- multiply every time you open it, but also they <laughs> don't hide problems, right? So um, GNOME, in my experience, will not show you near near uh, no no GNOME distribution will ever show you near as many error messages and alerts as uh, KDE. Yeah, I opened the Fedora thirty three on KDE and. I I boot it right, and I still I'm I'm getting all these messages. This is a problem. This is an issue. Something crashed. Something fell apart. But nothing's wrong, right? So that that kind of creates the <laughs> thing that the system is broken. Yet, like I'm pretty sure that even like Windows and Mac OS, they they all have issues. Something's broken constantly inside it. There's issue. Things stop working. Things stop. Things crash. Things restart. They just don't tell you. Same on like most Linux distributions. It's just KDE decides to. I think anyway, that seems to be the thing. Like they, they don't hide this stuff. They say, uh, "Look, this is." I mean, it's it's more. I use it. I'm not a fanboy, right? I use it because I, I I jump between GNOME and this. I always I like the GNOME workflow more, and I like the KDE. It's just more useful to me. It mm. lets me do more things, and uh, I, I sometimes enjoy the craziness. I could try Cinnamon with the same thing. Uh, it just never attracted me. There's nothing insane about it. Like there's, it's just too just. It's it's good. It works, but it's not KDE. KDE is insane sometimes. It's cinnamon is just boring to me anyway. I know people love it. The key thing for me, I guess, is 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 cohesion of everything. 
like the theming of apps uh, i like it i like the theming to be consistent throughout the throughout the desktop environment and i feel that that doesn't ha- always happen on kde like i had terrible trouble with the the dark themes like because i love dark themes but they're just they're they're not always implemented very well i mean like the i tried breeze dark and then ubuntu studio dark and i think i can't remember which one but on one of them it was like changing the color of text fields but not changing the color of the text so i couldn't see what i was typing and stuff like that just little things like that so that's that's what put me off it it's like kde is it's a desktop environment for grown-ups one thing i will say about the um changing the the text field but not changing the text is sometimes i'm not saying you hadn't tried this but uh sometimes that requires a log out and log back in in order to for that to update and um, so if you're doing it on the fly if you're going oh that looks shit i'm going to switch to something else it it may have worked you just have to had to log out and log back in um another thing is yeah on the consistency i'm um well with you because i'm running kd at the moment and uh I sometimes I install GTK apps. I mean, uh, in fact, uh, Manjaro, uh, it's it's package manager. The GUI package manager is a GTK app. Um, so sure, it it looks okay with its default theme. Um, but I prefer uh, their default theme is like black header bars and like light the light background for the rest of the application, which it looks nice. But I prefer personal preference. I prefer dark everything so and then i switched to breeze dark which is a very nice looking theme but the thing is there's no gtk equivalent uh, i'm looking sorry i'm looking at the kd so in the settings you can say i uh, get new gnome gtk application styles and there seem to be like if you look for breeze okay you, can, you yeah. get you get a lot of results and i thought it was it but they are just like they are not quite the same right I, I, I spent uh, about 20 minutes looking through this, so I didn't spend hours, but I spent like 20 minutes and I couldn't find something. So um, I might throw it out there to the listeners as well. Um, feel free to email show at linuxlads.com. Hey, um, if you are able to, if you know of uh, a really good, consistent, like Breeze Dark theme for GTK, that would look consistent with Breeze Dark on KDE or uh, feel free to suggest themes for both desktop environments that would look consistent with each other and I might try out both of them as long as they look consistent with each other I will I'll definitely try them out Hi Shane here just reminding everybody of our socials um, you can get us on at Linux Lads on Twitter you can go to linuxlads.com forward slash mastodon you can find us on Telegram. We have a pretty active group there, uh, the Linux Lads group on Telegram. Just search for it. You should find it. Um, in the Steam community, you can search for Linux Lads Podcast. We're there also. Um, you can email us on show at linuxlads.com. You can even go to our merch store and get a nice T-shirt or a mug or something like that on uh, linuxlads.com forward slash store. If you want to just sing us a small donation towards our server costs or anything like that, you can go to linuxlads.com forward slash donate. Okay, back to it. So, 2021 might bring a production-ready plasma whaling session. Speaking of KDE, uh, speaking of KDE, so they are obviously uh, trying to make uh, trying to make it work on um, uh, trying to make Wayland work for uh, for KDE. And uh, which developer was it? Now was it uh, was it uh, Nate Graham or one of the developers went on um, went basically live and said that they, this 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 year the focus is going to be among other things. Uh, Wayland because uh, they are and I tried Wayland actually on on uh, KDE and it's not too bad like you know providing that you are not using NVIDIA drivers providing that you are not using um, I think dual monitor setup is pro- is a problem as well uh, and there might be f- few a lot more ed- I mean, there might be a lot more edge cases but I think I used it on that little the, on that little computer because that has only Intel graphics, right? There's no NVIDIA in there. And on OpenSUSE out of all things. Uh, and that worked um, remarkably well. Like it was uh, valent with x So OpenSUSE KDE has got uh, three options, Plasma, Plasma on Valent and Plasma Valent with x And that, 
that just you know worked the, the, the X X applications worked well, the the whatever he was using Wayland that worked well as well. So I I assume they will be like uh, they will get it by by ne- by this time next year. It's possible that several uh, distributions, maybe including KD Neon, will uh, run Wayland out of the box. Uh, I think Fedora thirty three is actually meant the thirty four, sorry, is actually meant to run Wayland out of the box, isn't it? Uh, I've heard that also. I uh, believe that is the case. Um, I've never actually tried Wayland. Uh, I've no uh, egg in the race at all. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's by all means it's, it's supposed to be the future. It's supposed to be much better. Yeah, and I can see the path that is going on because um, uh, Xorg is old, crusty, and yada yada yada. I get the philosophical reason for doing it, and like let's start afresh, let's start new, everything like that. Uh, and if Fedora is, is doing it by default, um, which I believe it is, uh, the only caveat is that I tend to like to game uh, occasionally, and the last Pharonix benchmark that I saw, I'm not saying it's the latest one, the last one that I saw, uh, it was a couple of months ago now, said that um, gaming on on Wayland was like a 50% uh, FPS hit versus Xorg. So there's definitely refinements to be done. Uh, but by all means, uh, if once they figure out those those kind of things, um, I'll be more than willing to try it out and switch. And I was wrong. Apparently Plasma supports NVIDIA GPUs with proprietary drivers on Wayland uh, with no configuration needed as of Plasma. 5.20 and yeah Fedora 20 Fedora 34 with KD on it that's going to be Wayland first but yeah if you say that uh, if you say Connor that you are getting performance hit on your gaming then that's definitely a reason for many people to stay put with Xorg uh, potentially that was the last um, I've never actually tried it myself but that was the last benchmarks that I saw from Phronix they said uh, they showed a, a, clo- a 50% hit on um Frames per second, Wayland versus Xorg. So, um, before we get into meatier topics, um, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to the winner of our Cyberpunk giveaway. Um, that's we, uh, as you might remember, we were doing a competition to give away a copy of Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, and Amolith, a friend of the show, uh, won the game. <laughs> so I didn't really know how to give that more pomp and circumstance, but yeah, he won it. So congratulations to him. I had a jitsy chat with uh, DM, who was the person who was um, giving it away. Thank you, DM. Um, he was the person who was purchased it and then gave it to the lucky winner. Um, and dm was there live during the jitsi chat as i did the random number generation so if dm was satisfied that it was all above board which it was then then that is your your test <laughs> the person who was purchasing the game was satisfied that it was all done fairly so stop the steal jesus christ <laughs> you know uh just literally uh no, today uh nick who was on the uh, Nick from the Linux experiment? Who was on the Who was on the show a year ago? I think he tweeted, "Congratulations to the United States for switching from Temple OS to a Sena distro. The whole world feels a lot safer." <laughs> so, in completely different news, uh, to change the topic abruptly, uh, Corillium posts a very early Linux port to the Apple M1 Max. And apparently uh, Ubuntu is running too. Um, so the uh, developer, I believe is the developer who said that he, uh, oh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's the developer who said that he would do this for full full time. Um, or it could be another developer, um, apologies that I'm not that up to speed with it, um, said that thanks to uh, what, is, what has been learned from the Corellium project, and they managed to uh, port Ubuntu over to the um, the the M1 platform as well. It's interesting all the fanfare around this. I mean, uh, the the really low level stuff I don't follow so much, honestly. But um, um, like is there like I know ha- like putting Linux on a Mac 
is is a lot of people's dream but why well specifically this mac like i think somebody reported i don't know how many hours of battery life no fan the thing is fast for you know and for a mac the macbook air is relatively cheap right the, the, the it's it's the fact it's not that it's like it's like everything else they do it's not that it's like mind-boggling new stuff but they just took something that you could do before you could make a android uh, android so you could make it on a laptop no problem but it does they just did it in such a way that it functions really well whatever they whatever reason you might have to buy it it will it will like what no, sorry for the for, for the use cases that this is that those devices are made for portability uh, battery life uh performance per uh you know performance per what stuff like this it will function really well like my mike dominic from uh, code radio bought one and he's smitten with it right so uh that's probably until he manages to pour some beverage into it uh, as his his way but uh so so the thing is we want linux on this because a it's uh it's good looking hardware and uh compared to like you know compared to the uh, ultra books it's not even that it's 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 about the same money uh and second we want this battery life and uh we want to be able to do this on this laptop because if this is where the industry is heading and everybody's going on well that's gonna be a shit show because uh arm is much more locked down uh platform than that x86 so you need the driver every linux on every arm is a different thing so you will need uh if we and if if if, if the projects that are working on this will manage to run uh linux on on apple hardware out of all things then everything else should kind of work and that's a good thing right plus people are just interested in doing that that's the new sexy thing what do you do oh i think if i could i think i could put a linux it looks like there was some linux on it <laughs> there was somebody saying like no we shouldn't do that we should we should definitely pull our resources and make sure that we put resources to the, to, to, to a better go no people like to do what they like to do and that's what linux is I about suppose if you put a stick a transistor to a rock people will try to put linux yeah. on it it's good. A toaster. Awesome. I'm not one to uh, needlessly or frivolously defend Apple, but I will in this case was apparently the, um, and it's not just apparently the, the benchmarks are out there. Um, they hired the right people who are CPU architecture experts and everything like that. And they have pulled off legitimately, uh, industry scaring um performance out of this thing the, like it's rivalry rival that uh, rivaling uh current intel and um amd uh top end processors uh and so their 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 uh performance co, co or their performance um curve is gone up exponentially. In other words, they're saying, okay, they, they should not have progressed in performance this quickly, this, this fast. And the reason why is because they're developing it all in house and they're, they have the CPU architecture uh, experts, uh, made the relevant acquisitions, they made the relevant hires, they made the relevant whatever, and they've been working on this. So this has been a long time coming. So this is not the usual Apple, um, snazzy marketing around uh, mediocre hardware or or average i'm definitely sold on max as hardware uh i do like i do love using it was a, it was a totally leading question i just wanted to see what you guys thought <laughs> <laughs> they actually enabled people to put to boot custom kernel on it like i think a few days back they they literally so so you can this is this this whole thing put in linux on the m1 they could have kind of prevented it, by the way. Yeah, they could have said, no, you, you cannot run, because they do that on the iOS devices. You cannot put Linux on iOS. Well, no, actually, that's right. You can put Linux on the iPhone. As somebody just did again recently on the iPhone 7, so it, but it's a massive hack, and Apple don't want you to do that. But with this, they actually enable. They don't help you. They don't, you know, they don't give you drivers or anything. Don't be stupid. But uh, they do let people put their own uh, put their own kernel on it. And it is just good. Like, you know, and you have to ask yourself, where is Intel? You know, Intel, I think they just current, they just uh, contracted TSMC because Intel themselves can't do five nanometer chip and TSMC are going to do them, do that for them, you know. Uh, where are, 
there are other manufacturers. You know, I'm sure they will follow. I'm sure there's going to be an ARM, uh, a very powerful ARM Windows PC very soon. Hopefully, this will translate into very powerful Linux uh, ARM PCs because you know the battery life. And I was, I, I've been saying this. I just that uh, that I don't like the performance on ARM um, because everything is a bit slow. But this is, and this is not just. Um, it's not just that the thing is powerful, but there's also there's a there's a lot of coprocessors in there, so it kind of delegates the tasks to uh, to different uh, to different chips within the chipset. It there's a different that it has got actually I don't know what they I don't remember what they call it, but basically the memory on this uh, device is shared between everything, so there is no uh, there is not much switching between. Uh, uh, between RAM and something else. I don't know. I read an article about it. It was very interesting, but I should have refreshed before I said it. But basically, it's a technical feat, uh, and uh, people uh, people are trying to put Linux on it, and that's very good. That about wraps things up. Um, next week, uh, we will be back. Uh, so we're not going weekly like uh, like Late Night Linux. We're, uh, we're just, um, just the delay meant that we had to record this week instead um but we will you'll be getting two in a row this time very spoiled um because we will have uh hopefully if things don't change we will have a guest next week all to be revealed um we're not going to say who it is just yet in case they cancel but <laughs> uh but uh we'll be upwardly mobile exactly so we've we have locked them in for next week so we we can't uh we can't avoid that so um yeah so uh tune in for that it's going to be very interesting it's going to be emotional (laughs) and uh (laughs) this has been the linux lads i'm shane i'm connor and i have mike ah shit i did the linux lads part first (laughs) goodbye bye bye